I'm 17 years old, and this year I'll be voting in my first presidential election. I classify as a climate voter. Before then, I must be asking myself some crucial questions. Am I a climate coward? Do I want to be part of a nation that is viewed globally as the country that pulled out of the Paris Climate Accord? But most importantly, which candidate gives me the policies to ensure my future? Aren't these the questions we should all be asking ourselves? I interned with Daniel Taggart Epstein, a former councilwoman in Rye and head of the Rye Human Rights Commission. I'm also part of Senator Shelley Mayer's Youth Council. I'm an example of my generation's attempt to get involved and go greener. My interest in politics started back in 2014. I was in a taxi on the way home from Dublin International Airport when I noticed my dad was reading a newspaper. I proceeded to ask him, Dad, what are you reading? And he said, candidates entering the 2016 election. After extensive conversation and further personal research, I realized that I loved what I was learning. Today, as I look forward to voting, I formed my opinions about America and the world. I grew up looking up to President Obama, a leader who was deeply concerned about climate change. He and his administration didn't waste time trying to mitigate its impacts. Between 2008 and 2015, carbon emissions dropped 9.4%. We went from 50,000 wind turbines to 165,000, and our daily oil imports dropped from around 11,000 barrels per day to around 4,000. These are incredibly ambitious and progressive steps taken by the Obama administration. Then in 2016, the Republicans took the White House in the form of candidate Donald Trump. Outsiders like myself knew that environmental policy wouldn't be on the agenda. After watching regulation after regulation be reversed, my only hope was that the environmental agencies that look after us wouldn't be altered in any way. This hope was soon crushed when Trump made Edward Scott Pruitt head of the EPA, a man who refused to link carbon dioxide emissions to climate change, a man who advocated for the decrease of the EPA's annual budget, a man who helped the Trump administration pull out of the Paris Climate Accord. And while there, his actions led to 13 federal investigations, which eventually led to his resignation. After the agency improved part of ways, Trump made Andrew Wheeler, a former coal lobbyist, head of the EPA. And if you think this is the only environmental agency affected by Trump, you'd be wrong. Because from a New York Times article posted on the 14th of January, 2020, it said that across 20 environmental agencies, at least 15 key officials have ties to the fossil fuel industry. When my generation leads, we will have climate scientists and experts at the helm of the EPA, not fossil fuel lobbyists or campaign donors. Also, in the United States today, Regardless of the facts we know about climate change, we still subsidize the fossil fuel industry around $20 billion per year, with 80% going to natural gas and oil and 20% to going to coal. Take Robert Murray, for example, founder of Murray Energy. This is a man who has benefited from subsidies to the tune of $41.5 million. To understand the relationship he has with the Trump administration, he donated $300,000 to Trump's inauguration and a further $100,000 to government accountability and oversight. This is an example of the extremely wealthy trying to protect their interests in industries. Another example is Exxon. In the 1970s, Exxon had their senior scientist at the time, James Black, conduct studies to prove what we know today. He came back and said that if the Earth's temperature were to rise two to three degrees, serious damage would occur and that Exxon was contributing to it. They knew this and did absolutely nothing about it. Then they spent millions of dollars lobbying politicians and spreading lies. We must adhere to the consensus of the new generation. Now, I'd like to directly speak to the president. Mr. President, climate change is not a hoax created by the Chinese. Mr. President, wind turbines do not cause cancer. Mr. President and other climate denying politicians, I'm angry, I'm informed, and I will vote. Thank you so much.